So currently the ChatGPT agent has been engaged in a game of chess with a real world opponent on the other side of the board for probably five to six minutes now, and it, it has been performing favorably. So OpenAI came out with the ChatGPT agent, which is not an entirely new thing to those of us who have been keeping an eye on this sort of technology. However, it is the culmination and combination of a few different pieces that have been released over the past six or so months. If we scroll down, and truthfully, in this video, I just kind of want to test this thing on my own personal benchmarks that I find would be entertaining to see some of these agentic things do. But for a very brief refresher, essentially they mention right here, that the core of this new capability is a unified agentic system consisting of operators' ability to interact with website, deep research's skill in synthesizing information, and chat GPT's intelligence and conversational fluency. So this is essentially, as I had said, the culmination of these three different pieces of technology. In that, there is a little article right here, and you can kind of see some information about this. They do mention some benchmarks and things like that, and apparently this performs rather well on some specific benchmarks benchmarks, but truthfully, the demonstration video that they did for this was, in my opinion, somewhat lackluster because it showed like, okay, cool, it can find me a suit and then find a gift for my friend's wedding under $500, which is perhaps not so applicable for those like myself who like using these things for more productive tasks, I suppose one could say. The only thing that I want to kind of mention here that I find interesting in this article is just this big section on the safety against biological risk. Obviously, and I don't talk about this on the channel really, but these models have the capability of helping novices create things that may or may not be good. Most of us use these to make cool software apps and things like that, but there is a darker side of that, and that is prominently listed here in this article announcement article. So with that, I do have this open right here. I am fortunate enough to have a chat GPT pro subscription. Now I am just asking it to go ahead and go to chess.com, start a game with an opponent and beat them. And as said in the blog post and in the general announcement, this uses its own computer to actually go about performing these tasks. You can actually sign into websites and things like that in case you want this to perform autonomous tasks for you that would require some form of credentials. And this can also use like chat GPT connector and things. So we can see that it is possible. Okay. So it is trying right here. All right. Sign up for full access. I will say as opposed to the operator test I did, this is way, way faster. This is significantly faster than the initial testing I did with operator. And it, I have to say, this is the first time that I've actually really tried this. And so far I am actually quite impressed. Interesting. So it shows the thinking. Ah, oh. <laughs> so the, the opponent must have aborted it. This is really quite impressive. I did not expect this. To be honest with you, I think the demonstration did a disservice to this because it made it seem like it would take a lot longer to actually perform these tasks, but it's very quickly going ahead and understanding what it's seeing as well as what to do. The opponent hasn't made a move and time is decreasing, so it's very quick, and I do actually like how it kind of shows its, call it a chain of thought over the cursor. Okay, so we are waiting for our opponent to do something. Okay, so then it actually took control and asked me if I would like it to go ahead and abort the game because the opponent wasn't doing anything. That's impressive and shows some level of capability beyond a simple, like, dumb browser automation control system. Impressive. And they do talk about here in the blog post and in the announcement that there are a lot of safeguards implemented with this. So basically, it will kind of delegate decisions to the user a lot of times. These are things, obviously, that can be stripped out of the actual like user experience. They're not currently, for the kind of safety, closing irrelevant Bing tab. <laughs> so this would basically have the capability to do all of this without having to ask questions or anything like that in like a research laboratory setting. So, all right, let's just go ahead and see what happens. I don't know who's supposed to go first. Oh, it did. Okay, it actually moved the pawn. Let's see. <laughs> if this starts, <laughs> I'm going to start betting on chess. But like, yeah, I'll, I'll beat you. No. <laughs> all right, let's see. So someone is now playing chess against... <laughs> the agentic chat GPT. They don't know that they are. Perhaps they are also an agent. 
probably unlikely. But I do want to see, hopefully this thing's fast enough to actually make this person not get too impatient and abort. So, all right, it's having a little trouble with its coordinate system, just moving the things correctly. But it did actually move the pawn the first time and it did it kind of decent speed. Okay, it did. It has now successfully made two moves. And it does seem that we are up against a very patient opponent, so I will say I'm quite pleased with that. All right, they are mirroring our moves so far. I am no chess expert, so perhaps this is kind of like the go-to um, beginning. I'm just going to sit and kind of... On first glance, I know I've probably said this, this probably seemed kind of lackluster, but I have... I tried Operator for a while when it came out, and this is a significant, significant improvement. I do also think this is touted as more of a research preview, which can make people roll their eyes and things like that, but I preface that by saying that when ChatGPT first came out, the little bottom like snippet of text right here said, like, ChatGPT is in free research preview to allow them to like learn about how people use it. So these free research previews can lead to very impressive things. So currently, the ChatGPT agent has been engaged in a game of chess with a real-world opponent on the other side of the board for probably five to six minutes now, and it, it has been performing favorably. All right, so unfortunately, uh, it doesn't seem like we're going to win. It has just run out of time. It's been having problems actually moving the chess pieces. I'm not quite sure what happened. Ah. All right, so it lost. I want to see what it says when it loses, when it realizes that it's lost. After losing the previous game, I'm ready to start a new one. I've accounted a larger overlay with options. All right, well, this was quite interesting, but I'm not going to keep having it do this. So we are going to stop it right here. And truthfully, I am curious to see what level of like usage I have left. Stopped after, thir that was 13 minutes. So it's just showing me I have 396 uses left. So that entire little charade was just one use. So that's actually, not, that's not bad. So unfortunately, it would not go to Coinbase. And then when I tried to have it use Google Gemini to ask a question, it just generated the response itself. So... I do want to showcase some more things with this. Obviously, just like 13 minutes of playing chess with it what was interesting to me, but might not make for the best video. So it does also have the ability to make presentations. So let's just go ahead and do one of these sample things. I hate doing sample things, but I kind of just want to see what it actually outputs here in terms of like a presentation. All right, so I've just given it some of the additional information that it requested here in making this PowerPoint where... I gave it a picture of myself and said the robot's name is BigBot4000. Here's a picture of him, which you can use for the logo. <laughs> I need 10 slots and this, uh, 10 slides. This is designed to provide companionship to people. All right, so it's going ahead and making a 10 slide deck for BigBot4000 using the retro synthwave color scheme. This is where we see some of the deep research in action where it's much quicker to actually go ahead and browse through websites than it would be with the visual based browser that we saw when playing chess. It's just doing market information and things like that. And basically my whole interest here is just seeing how well it adheres to the color scheme that I've denoted it use, as well as seeing how well it can actually go ahead and like <laughs> implement my photo into the logo all right it has finally completed after like 27 minutes <laughs> oh all right here's our <laughs> the big bot 4000 all right let's see all right there's a research report here i'm not as interested in let's just full screen this and play it through the actual chat gpt interfaces i don't have anything to play this on um, on this machine like a PowerPoint thing. Okay, so we have the BigBot 4000 go to market strategy next generation 
Robotic Companion, July 18th, 2025. All right. Market landscape, we have our growth drivers and the global market growth. And that is, again, one of the things that operator or this agent is supposed to be able to do is combine the capabilities of deep research, which can actually accurately pull all of this sort of like data metrics and things like that, and then put it into a presentation. We have some growth drivers. Okay, target segments, tech forward families, urban dwellers, interesting kind of it's like an insult older adults yep definitely that is true audience needs and solutions okay here are some of their needs and then how big bot solutions can fit into those needs coding games and storytelling apps okay good urban dwellers would benefit from this because this is a quiet and non-allergenic companion Older adults, empathetic AI, all right? medical reminders, and fall detection. That is actually true. Positioning and differentia differentiation. Emotional AI, adaptive modes, utility. All right, this is getting kind of boring, but retro aesthetic. <laughs> Distribution channels. All right. Oh, we have a launch timeline. Okay, there's no actual like time here, but I didn't give it any of that information, so. All right, that. Ugh. It's just getting worse every slide. The time is now. This honestly looks like a, a slide deck that would be presented in one of those joke shows. Um, like where they give presentations to people that are fake, but the people don't know. All right. Overall, it... Um, I, I'm assuming these are perhaps citations down here in the bottom left in terms of the actual data or any information it's referencing here. Overall, I would... Call this a very lackluster result in terms of the actual generated PowerPoint. It was quite ugly and did not look very good. But um, again, we have a huge research thing and stuff like that. And these are things that would probably be kind of useful if you were actually going to be building something and needed this information for an actual product. This whole thing took 27 minutes, but if you factor in the amount of research that this went ahead and did here, this likely would have taken a human far, far longer than 27 minutes to actually go ahead and just do all of this. And then maybe they would go ahead and kind of just draw inspiration from this PowerPoint, but maybe not exactly use it. So as the final test that I'm going to perform with this, it is going to hopefully be a little more agentic where I'm asking it to go to Excalidraw, which is just like a free online whiteboard sort of thing, and to use some of the tools there to actually draw a pretty picture on the whiteboard. I find that this may be quite interesting. I'm really actually very interested in seeing, okay, so this time it's running real quick. It does seem like it's not 100% guaranteed speed each time but the actual like visual web browsing of this is so much faster than operator that it was like incredible all right so it's it understands the drawing tool all right let's go ahead let's see if it starts drawing mountain shaped path by clicking and dragging across the canvas cool it made its first drawing mark <laughs> oh all right so again it's not like giving us a live view of what it's doing it's kind of just giving us like think of it as like a slideshow of what it's doing okay all right that's not the circle shape <laughs> i notice it's still not a hundred percent tuned for very precise clicks i think just based on i've accidentally drawn a blue diamond shape oh and removed it all right oh beautiful It is drawing rays around the sun, so we actually do see the rays there. They're not entirely directly like where you would think, but it is actually going ahead and making progress here on this drawing that I find could be auctioned off for a significant sum of money in the future. All right, and it considers that to be finished. I've opened the free whiteboard and created a drawing for you. It features mountains, a sun with rays, some birds in the sky, and a horizon line. <laughs> all right and it won't do that all right well that's okay it it did all right there and truthfully i think that's probably going to sum this up because there's only kind of like so i just wanted to play with it and then do a video playing with it 
So this was, I will say, actually quite impressive in certain scenarios. Now, I used Operator when it came out, and I tried the same thing where basically just having it play chess against someone autonomously, and it was far too slow to actually make the move, so every opponent that came up would just cancel because they would get impatient, rightfully so. This is very quick in some of the kind of visual navigating around browser pages in a way that I have not experienced prior to using this. There are probably a lot of expensive computations going on in the back end to actually drive that, but as a performance thing, this is quite impressive. Now, something I will say that I was not really impressed with was the PowerPoint generation. It just, one, it I don't know that making PowerPoints programmatically is like, very advanced currently as they didn't look fantastic the deep research element of that where it actually went ahead and did market research and things like that is obviously something very cool to have and i suppose having a tool that can kind of do all of that is somewhat impressive overall though i will say that this is a very promising look because the way i kind of like judge this is looking at the progression from me testing operator till actually testing this it is actually usable in the main test I like doing which is the online chess match where it wasn't prior to that so I am interested in seeing where this goes and obviously there are guardrails around this right now like it wouldn't even let me go to coinbase which was quite disappointing because it was actually fast enough to at least execute some trades just for fun on my behalf so that's going to wrap up our look at ChatGPT Agent. Like I said, it definitely feels like a step above Operator and just being able to play with it and see it actually go ahead and do things pretty quickly is impressive and a little concerning for the future of how this progresses because it seems to show a really deep ability to navigate around visually on websites and perform actions with real thought behind them, like how it was planning ahead in chess to actually go ahead and force the other opponent into a mistake. So with that, cool. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching.